Police officers of Reddit, who's the smartest criminal you've ever encountered? A friend of my brother moved to Israel where for a period of time it was slash is acceptable to drive with an American driver's license. He was pulled over for speeding, and when asked for his license, gave the officer his Costco card. Costco is a membership-based retail warehouse in the US and a few other countries. The exchange apparently went something like this, Officer, Costco? What is Costco? Friend, it's the state I'm from. Officer, that sounds made up. Friend, there are lots of states you probably haven't heard of. Have you heard of Arkansas? How about Idaho? Officer, I guess not. Friend, well I'm from the small state of Costco. The officer didn't have a response and wound up writing the ticket to someone with a Costco driver's license. Friend framed the ticket and still has it hanging on his wall. Well, there was this one guy. Well call him Jack. Now, Jack stole stuff but also involved a lot of people. One time, he was planning to steal a whole bunch of cars, all luxury cars. So what he did, was he got his people to call 911, etc., from all different places, and countries, to tell them that car theft was taking place in multiple places. Oh, he also only used a few people each time, so it was different voices, people, locations, etc. So the police went each time, until he actually did the crime, then no one came. He was never caught. When the owner of those cars came, the police didn't believe him. Ten tenths genius right there. There was a guy with over 50 speeding charges, with the name Pro Ojazdi. He was in a different car, with a different disguise every single time. Eventually, after the government set up a special task force to take down this guy, they realized that Pro Ojazdi means driver's license in Polish. Clarification, it was 50 different people, the police just wrote down their name as Pro Ojazdi every time someone with a Polish driver's license was caught speeding. There's a small tourist town where I grew up that is divided in half by a big river. The only way between the two sides is over a long bridge, unless you go all the way around another mountain pass. These guys called in, like, two to three bomb threats to a posh hotel on one side of the bridge. I think they even left some dummy packages. All the police went across the bridge to do crowd control, etc, etc. The guys then called in a bomb threat on the bridge, and started robbing stuff on the other side. The police couldn't be positive the bomb threat was real or not and hesitated long enough to give the thieves a head start. I first heard this story about 10 years ago, in Banff, Alberta never bothered to look up what was real versus what is invented. I think this is pretty close. But as my father used to say, you can't let truth get in the way of a good story. Wow, 24k upvotes. Thanks folks. Folded hands. Working in a home improvement store when younger. This guy came in, went to the snowblowers took one and went to the return desk. Said he wanted to return it but had no receipt. They told him you need a receipt so he says okay I'll be back and wheels it off to car through the front door. He did this a few times apparently. Couple places even helped him load it back into his car. Homeless guy in my hometown figured out if he committed some act of petty theft he'd get a night in jail. A warm place to sleep and a hot meal. He'd show up, turn in his stolen goods and that would be that. After a while the police would just tell him to take back whatever he stole the next day. Quite the town character. A French thief who spent 10 years in prison became a comedian when he got out. One of his stories, finds a building, goes in, chooses a floor and transforms the exit door into an extra apartment. Puts the apartment number, fake lock, welcome rug, etc. Puts an iPhone for sale. The person comes to buy it, he opens the door in a shower robe and says give me one second, I'm just gonna count the money. And poof, he's gone from the exit stairs. Not a policeman here, but I have a nice story from insurance slash debt collectors. There was this guy who was already in heaps of debt, like more than a lifetime's worth of debt. He proceeded to file several police reports for identity theft up to the point that he got protected from financial checkups, 
it was a temporary measure that were given to repeated identity theft victims. At the same time he had reported fake income to the IRS for the last couple of years to between 40 to 60 millions depending on the year. So when he applied for credit cards and loans, they were unable to check his financial credit, due to the identity theft protection, but they checked his tax returns which showed he had a massive income. Got his loans and credit cards, emptied them out and left the country. This was in the late 90s early noughties. A guy in my dorm came to school solely to deal drugs. He took out student loans, registered for a bunch of 300 person freshman survey courses where he would never be missed, then literally never went to class. All he did was go to raves and concerts and keggers and sell party drugs. After the first semester, he was suspended. He wrote the usual I was young and dumb and in over my head sob story, and got put on probation for a semester. So he had a repeat of the fall. At the end of the year, he was kicked out, and didn't care. He made something on the order of $150,000, in return for about $8,000 in student loans to cover a year of housing and tuition. So far as I know, he was never caught. It may have been a short-sighted maneuver in the long run, but in the short run it seemed fairly genius to effectively use federal loans to start your drug business. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more.